What is going on, everyone? A lot to cover today. And Tuesdays, it's probably my favorite day to talk about the Eagles because on Sunday when I put up my video, I watch the game and I come right into the studio and I start screaming, I start fist bumping, I start going wild or I start crying, right? It's raw emotion three seconds after the football game. So there's not a lot of time to really digest everything. It's, it's instant reaction. Monday, I do the podcast with Shelfie and there's still a sense of reaction towards the game, and it's definitely still emotional. There's not too much time to really let everything settle. But Tuesday's different. There's a couple more nights sleep, a couple more deep breaths involved, and you get to analyze what actually happened and where the Eagles are now a little bit differently. It was this moment when you realized Broads was giving you free money. That's right, use the promo code BRODES at SeatGeek's checkout page when ordering tickets for free money. So, we have the injury problem with the wide receivers and Tim Jernigan and Dallas Goddard. We have the Doug Peterson play calling issue and the run game problem. Also, can we go out and get a Jalen Ramsey? Is that possible? We will discuss this all. Let's start with the injuries. We have two games in the next nine days. That's right. We have the Detroit Lions. Then we have a short week and we have to go to Lambeau. I'm not overlooking the Lions whatsoever. But the last thing you can do is be one and two going into Lambeau Field, right? So this game is mandatory to win. And we know we are a better team than the Detroit Lions. But you have to have a great mindset and you have to be prepared. And you have to take care of business at home. You cannot overlook anything. Any team in this league, because on any given Sunday, any team can win. So you can't overlook it. I'm not trying to jump the Detroit Lions, but you just need to know in the back of your head that the the Green Bay Packers away is coming up on a short week. It looks as if, injury-wise, Alshon's going to miss some time. Dallas Goddard's going to miss some time. And Tim Jernigan's out four to six weeks. And that defensive tackle... Spot is really concerning to me because we're just not really getting much production, all right? And Malik Jackson's out. Now Tim Jernigan's out. We have Hakeem Spence and Hassan Ridgeway. And Hassan Ridgeway ended up getting a penalty when he had a chance to play in Sunday's game. But in terms of the wide receiving core, it's possible that we run out Deshaun Jackson, if he's even available, but he seems to be like... The guy who will have the best chance to play on Sunday. So if we throw out Deshaun Jackson, J.J. Ortega-Whiteside, Nelson Aguilar, and Mac Collins, that might be our weapons. Here's the difference, though. And this is why I have a little bit of hope. On Sunday's game, you had Deshaun play, what, in the teens in regards to how many snaps he had? Alshon Jeffrey, six. Dallas Goddard got hurt in warm-ups. Didn't even get to play at all. We game-planned all week long. Doug Peterson, this team, they game-planned all week long for this game. And all of a sudden, before the game even really gets going, it's in the trash. It's crumbled up. It's done. It is in the garbage. Because how many 12 personnel sets do you think we dialed up? Probably a lot, considering we run those all the time. Everything that you structured for that game went right into the dumpster. And you have to think on the fly. You have to adjust on the fly. Now, I do say that Doug Peterson needs to be better when it comes to that because he struggled. And I love Doug Peterson, of course, but that's part of being an elite coach. You have to find a way to adjust in these situations. It's very hard to do so. I'm not saying it's easy, and I'm not saying a lot of coaches can nail it down like that. But if Doug Peterson wants to be an elite coach, he's got to figure out a way to do that. You do lose huge main pieces now. We're not talking about the third, fourth wide receivers. You're losing essentially your top two receivers and your second tight end where you run 12 personnel sets all the time. Those are monstrous losses, but you do need to adjust. But the difference is you get the game plan with these four receivers if it ends up being Deshaun, J.J. Ortega, Whiteside, Aguilar, and Hollins. You get to game plan with those four all week long and put together offensive plays that work with those players. So that's the difference. You will have time to prepare. 
They were not prepared last game. For example, that play where Carson Wentz threw the interception to the Falcons defender who was on his butt, well, apparently there was a big-time miscommunication because it was supposed to be a comeback route and the receiver were was not on the same page. And that plays a factor with preparing all week long for the next opponent. Someone's going to have to step the hell up. Whether it's Nelson Aguilar, Mac Hollins, who made some decent catches, J.J. Ortega, Whiteside, someone's going to have to really step up. Now, we saw J.J., and we saw him in moments. And let's be real. I expected a little bit more. I did. Now, I know he's a rookie, and I know his strong suits, and I know what he can do, and the best parts of his game, but I, I, I need to see him do that. He looked a little overwhelmed. Especially with the speed aspect. It didn't look like he could break free as well as I expected him to. He couldn't gain any space like I expected him to. I'm not going to say I expected him to be Julio Jones, but I expected him to make a little bit of separation there. Get open. So uh, hopefully someone steps the hell up. And Doug Peterson too, because the scripted plays, it, it has to change. It has to change. Frank Reich with a lot less talent in, in Indianapolis, sure isn't having as much of a struggle as we are. That's my biggest concern with this football team. And I do have to question Doug in terms of the the two tight end thing. If you knew you were going to run a ton of 12 personnel sets, how do we go into the game with two tight ends? I mean, it's common sense to me, at least. It's common sense. You have a third man just in case someone gets injured. It's common sense. So let's talk about the run game, because that was a hot topic. A lot of fans screaming, Why aren't we playing power football with Jordan Howard? Why isn't Jordan Howard getting all the touches? Why isn't Jordan Howard running the ball a million times? Maybe Jordan Howard just isn't that good. This coaching staff sees them a lot more than we do. For some reason, we expect Jordan Howard to be this elite running back threat. And I even said that when we made the trade. Does it help us? Absolutely. But do I expect him to be what he was his rookie year? No. And I think you can see that the coaching staff doesn't see that either. Or else he would be pounding the rock with Jordan Howard all the time. Jordan Howard isn't what, what he was his first year in the league. And you need to realize that. Now, can Doug run the ball more? Absolutely. And I do agree that he needs to. But to this, this narrative that Jordan Howard is this elite threat. We need to get him the ball a million more times. He's not Zeke. He's not Barkley, okay? If, if Saquon Barkley and Zeke were getting 12 touches a game and we weren't giving him the rock enough, I, I'd say, okay, you know what? We got to give Zeke or Barkley the ball more. But that's not the case. And that goes hand in hand with Miles Sanders. He looks overwhelmed. He looks overwhelmed. He's struggling to find the gaps. And then he starts bouncing to the outside. But the problem is, he gets caught because the defenders in this league are so athletic. <sighs> Let's look at this Jalen Ramsey thing. I I'm getting a little more fired up than I expected to. The Minka Fitzpatrick news, you knew every team was going to be in on him. He's a solid player. He wants out of Miami. A lot of teams were involved. He ends up going to the Steelers last night for a first rounder, and then there were some other minor picks that were moved around a little bit, but essentially it was the first round pick that got the deal done. It makes sense for the Dolphins to pick the Steelers because with Big Ben going down, that first round pick might be a little bit higher than expected. The Steelers want to build that defense. They drafted Devin Bush, and now they have Fitzpatrick back there. It's not a terrible move, but in my opinion, if Big Ben's down, Big Ben looks toast to me, and I would look forward to using that maybe to get a quarterback, but if they believe in Rudolph, then they believe in Rudolph, whatever. I don't really care about the Steelers whatsoever. The point is, Fitzpatrick's off the board for the Eagles. Jalen Ramsey wants out of the Jags. Everyone wants him. Everyone's screaming. How we make the move? Not going to happen. I I'd be shocked. I'd be shocked. Listen, this guy is going to have a monster payday. Monster payday after this year. I just don't know how that will work. How he's a cap wizard. How he's a magician with money. Yes, but this is different. 
He's going to get a mega deal as a corner. There's just no way we're going to be able to afford that with what we have. There's just no way. But if I'm Howie, I also need to realize there's a problem. Jim Schwartz, what we watched Jim Schwartz do last game in terms of blitzing all the time, bringing the pressure, that is monstrous. That guy is so hard-headed with his system, it is telling you something that he relied on blitzing all the time. He never blitzes! So because he brought the blitz so heavily play after play after play, it tells you that he doesn't trust our secondary and our, our corners at all! At all! And he's right. He shouldn't. But if I'm Howie, I need to somewhat use that knowledge and say, do I find a way to make it work? I, it, it, there's no way it does, though. Like, there's no way it does. But if I'm Howie, I got to at least think about a way to maybe. But but there's just no way it does. And maybe it's not Jalen Ramsey. It's upgrading the cornerback position in another way. Use the knowledge and use the information of Jim Schwartz blitzing all the time. And bring in the pressure. Use that. To make. A judgment call. And say maybe we just got to find another corner. Maybe not Jalen Ramsey. Because he's going to get that pay day. But maybe it's someone else. But I thought it was very telling. Very telling. The way Jim Schwartz approached that game. Against the Falcons. And, and speaking of the Falcons. I find this funny. Their reaction in the locker room of them dancing. Listen, I, I respect how much hard work they put into that game. And I'm sure it felt great to come out on top of that football game. But the way they reacted, I swear to you, it was as if they won the Super Bowl. I'm, I'm dead serious. That was one hell of an interesting reaction. You can be happy. You can dance. Uh, you can't celebrate to the degree of that. Holy hell, that, that's embarrassing in my opinion. I mean, that's just embarrassing. <laughs> and news dropped, by the way, maybe five seconds before I hit the record button. The Giants are going to start Daniel Jones this week. That's exciting. I, I'm curious. I'm curious on how he does, to be honest with you. I want to see him go out there and play. I'm, I'm curious because he had a decent preseason. I want to see him in, in some live action. So I want to get your thoughts on what you thought about the topics of this video. Jalen Ramsey, the injuries, Doug Peterson, the, the run plays. I want to get your thoughts on all of that. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, and I will see you next time.